This video is brought to you by Paragon, my own original sci-fi novel, now available on Amazon. Check the description for links where you can buy. Oh, Babylon 5 spin-offs. They just can't catch a break, can they? Crusade, cancelled before the first episode even aired. Legend of the Rangers, wasn't picked up after the pilot TV movie. And now, The Lost Tales, released in 2007, ten years after the end of the original show, it was intended as the beginning of a new anthology series set within the Babylon 5 universe, except no wait, never mind, it's just these two short stories. So here we go. After ten years, Babylon 5 The Lost Tales obviously has some updated VFX, and um, I don't know about these to be honest. The presentation of The Lost Tales is... weird. That's the best way I can articulate it, because while the image quality is certainly sharper and the VFX are more advanced, it still looks strangely dated. This was still 2007, so I'm not expecting Star Trek Discovery or the Expanse levels of visual spectacle, but Stargate Atlantis and Battlestar Galactica were around the same time, and I gotta say, they stand up a hell of a lot better than Lost Tales does. I think, however, this has more to do with production design than it does with technical quality. Much like Star Trek the original series, Babylon 5's design often came about as a result of lack of resources, but by 2007 the resources to create more detailed and realistic looking sci-fi shows were more accessible. A lot of these locations and interiors just look like sets rather than actual lived-in spaces. I don't really believe this is the interior of a space station. The original show was so unquestionably of its time, and yet it was able to find a workaround with these limitations. However, Lost Tales seems dated and cheap. What used to look gritty and grounded in the original show now looks too pristine and bland. There is a ten year gap in continuity after all, some updated aesthetics wouldn't have gone amiss. The overall filmmaking style also is a little too restrained. Simple coverage like this has worked on more recent shows like The Orville, but that show is so clearly trying to look like Star Trek The Next Generation that it works, and the style does become more kinetic during action sequences. Here, however, it feels slow and empty, even compared to the original show. Dialogue scenes were more crisp, often carried by lengthy walk-in talks. The space-based sequences certainly look nice, with the gliding camera which made Babylon 5 space battles so fantastic, but in general the regular scenes with the characters feel strangely flat. Whereas other sci-fi franchises like Star Trek or Stargate continuously updated their style of presentation, Babylon 5 The Lost Tales seems stuck in the past. The two stories themselves, I'm sorry to say, aren't really that gripping. I chalk this up to a combination of shortened screen time and too small a budget. Both of these stories are shorter than an average Babylon 5 episode, and are often confined to a very small number of locations and characters. Part 1, over here, follows Colonel Lockley who brings in a priest to confront an apparently possessed maintenance worker. What follows is an internal debate about the place of religion in a futuristic sci-fi universe. And being that I myself am a devout worshipper of the Great Old One Cthulhu, I didn't really have much to invest in this story from a thematic point of view. But the plot itself unfortunately falls quite flat. The real problem is that we don't get a feel for the stakes of the drama. I really didn't get a sense of what the threat was. The demon possessing Burke talks of God seeding space with his kind in order to keep humanity in check. If humanity knows the devil exists, they also know God exists. And um, uh, yeah. Aside from some apparently conjured fire, I really don't get what else is gonna happen here. Father Cassidy, who earlier expressed sadness over the shrinking number of believers, is put in an interesting position when a solution to his problem is presented in the form of evil. But beyond that initial idea of moral temptation, that thread doesn't really go anywhere. And in the end, Lockley exposes the demon's lie, knowing they are in fact trapped on Earth, then they just sedate the guy and take him back to Earth. Like, is, is that it? You could have just knocked the guy out all along and taken him off the station? Was he even that dangerous? His fire thing didn't seem to hurt anyone. There didn't seem to be a risk of more possessions. But the gigantic question I have is, what the hell was possessing the guy in the first place? Was this an alien of some kind, or an actual friggin' demon? Because if it's the second one, that has some pretty huge implications. But this isn't even delved into that far. I guarantee if a so-called spawn of Satan rocked up on the Enterprise, some highly prudent questions would be asked. But instead, most of the story is just walking back and forth to this cell to chat with a not particularly scary villain. The whole time I just feel like I'm missing something, the entire segment simply left me with nothing. The second story, titled Over There, was a bit stronger. President Sheridan is about to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Interstellar Alliance when Galen appears to him in a dream. He is told he must murder a young Satari prince in order to prevent a devastating war in the future. 
Bruce Boxleitner returns to the role of John Sheridan like he never left it. He's just as badass, goofy and headstrong as he's always been, and his dynamic with Peter Woodward is great fun to watch. Keegan McIntosh does a serviceable job as Prince Vintari, but I feel like the performance is a little self-conscious. Although the overarching Prevent Future War premise is some firmly treaded ground at this point, watching Sheridan psych himself up to actually murder this guy was pretty nail-biting. Sheridan has made a lot of tough choices beforehand, so there was actually a possibility he would go through with it. However, the get-out is pretty clever and the final verbal joust with Galen is quite satisfying. I think what holds this story back though is once again a lack of real stakes. The original show was over a long time ago, and divorced from the universe and its context, this possible future war doesn't really hit home the way it should. Overall a decent wee story, but nothing too extraordinary. I think The Lost Tales suffers from similar problems as Stargate Origins did. Now of course Stargate Origins was a million times worse than Lost Tales, but they share similarities in terms of production and release. Babylon 5 is an incredibly valuable property and has a universe with so much potential, but for whatever reason Warner Bros. just doesn't seem interested in doing anything with it. Thus we have to settle for a quick and cheap bite-sized DVD release of some extra offhand story ideas. Babylon 5 was always greater than the sum of its parts, and really the best way to bring it back as far as I'm concerned would be as a video game or another epic 5 year spanning TV show. There just isn't the support for either of those things, which is really a shame. So Babylon 5 The Lost Tales, did it suck? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to say yes with this one. Because while Babylon 5 at its height was one of the most powerful viewing experiences I've ever had, these extra stories just didn't really do anything for me. I almost wish it was extraordinarily bad because then I'd have a bigger reaction to it, but after the credits rolled I just sort of shrugged. And Babylon 5 should be more than that. It can be more than that. Apostolus Pouliakis, no way I'm saying that correctly, asks, will you be doing any more fantasy videos? While my top 5 fantasy universes video didn't really get many views, I'm probably going to cover something from fantasy at some point. I don't really know what yet, possibly a did it suck on some movie or TV show. I think there likely is demand for that kind of content. There is a lot of crossover between sci-fi and fantasy in terms of world building, unusual characters and bizarre stories. So yes, I will make more fantasy oriented videos at some point in the future, I just don't know what yet. If you have any suggestions, comment below. If you like my videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on all my new uploads. You can see videos early on my Patreon for as little as $5 a month. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank my patrons Matthew Andrelowitz, David Phelps, Chris Lord, Andy Luke, Larry Bennett, James, James Vanderhaeg, T. Stoney, and L. Carton. Until next time, have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.